Good morning, this is Rob Bremer and you're watching Walks with God. And today I'm excited because I'm going over the favorite part in my book on raising the dead. Um, this is number four, and I'm sharing from my book, Feed My People Joy. Kingdom Living for End Times. <clears throat> okay, so today we are going to go over some facts about death. Now, now, the first wrong believing we're going to go over is God is sovereign, which God is sovereign, and He can do whatever He wants. But, people believe God is sovereign, He can do whatever He wants, whatever happens is His will. What they're saying is, um, what happens, happens because it's God's will. Well, that is wrong believing. That is how the devil kills, steals, and destroys you, your family, your finances, your home, your life, everything. The truth is, uh, God made the earth and he gave it to man. He said, rule, have dominion, have authority over all the earth. That was his will. His will was for man to have authority and dominion over all the earth. Sickness and death is an enemy. And we have authority over the power of the enemy. And we have authority over death. Here is the scripture. First of all, God's not a man that he would lie. Okay, God is sovereign, but he made rules. And he is a God of honor. He follows the rules that he made. And here are some of those rules, which are very, very important for you getting healing and healing the sick and for you raising the dead and for you to rule and reign in your life. Number one, God gave man all authority and told them to rule, subdue, and have dominion. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Number two, you have what you say, not what God says. Um, and that is scripture, Mark 11, 24. That whoever shall say unto this mountain, now whoever, not when God says, whoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and cast in the sea, and not doubt what they, they say in their heart, believe those things that they say, they'll come to pass, they'll have whatever they said. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you desire when you pray, you believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Okay, rule number three God made. <clears throat> you are to bind and loosen. I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind shall be bound, and whatever shall be uh, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loosen on earth shall be loosened in heaven. Matthew 16, 19. Again, in Matthew 18, 18, I say unto you, whatever you bind on earth you shall, bound, shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loosen on earth shall be loosened in heaven. Is there sickness in heaven? No. Bind it on earth. Is there death in heaven? No. Bind it on earth. Is there poverty in heaven? No. Bind it on earth. Okay, number four. God said, if two agree on earth, it will be done for them. And that is Luke 10, 19. Again, I say unto you, I mean, I'm sorry, that's Matthew 18, 19. Again, I say unto you that if two of you agree on earth, two of you human beings agree on earth, not in heaven, okay? As touching anything they ask, it shall be done for them by my Father that is in heaven. Okay, number five. Jesus said he had all power over all the power of the enemy, Luke 19. You are in him. You are hidden in Christ. Everything Jesus did, he did for you, not for himself. He had all authority and dominion on heaven and earth before he came to earth, so he didn't have to get it for himself. He got it for us. And that's a revelation I just got right there. Um, he got it for us. All heaven and all power on heaven and earth is given to Jesus because he gave it to us as a man giving it to us. Um, number six, you resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's James 4, 7. You resist the devil. If you don't know what the devil comes to kill, steal, destroy, then you'll say it's God's will because it's happening. God allowed it to happen. That's not true. Okay, number seven. The whole world lies, and this is First John 5, 9. The whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Everything bad that happens on this earth is under the sway of the wicked one. Destroying weather, destroying animals, destroying plagues, poverty, lack, sickness, disease, death, rape, fires, tornadoes, anything that comes to kill, steal, and destroy is not from God. Okay? The whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one because he is the God of this earth. Do you think if God was the God of this earth ruling and reigning right now that we would have all this trash on the earth right now? Not. Okay. Um, I'm, I just get all excited about this because if I can get this into your head, into your heart, that God is a good God and everything good, abundance, overflowing and beautiful, he wants for you and he paid for you to have it, just like it is in heaven. Okay, now, the next wrong believing. You have to die sometime. How will a person die if not by sickness, disease, or accident? Ugh, the devil makes me so mad, he's so stupid. Um... You, you don't have to die. You can be raptured. And I believe I'm going to be raptured because I think we are that close to the rapture. Everything's in place. 
But you know what? If not, you can die when you're ready. And it doesn't have to be, be by sickness, disease, or accident. And I'm going to show you a whole bunch of people who did that. Okay. Um, here are some scriptures. Genesis 25, 7. Abraham, he lived to be a hundred years old. Then Abraham gave up the ghost, or gave up the spirit, and died in a good old age, an old man full of years. He gave up the ghost. He didn't die of sickness, disease. Okay, num uh, number two, Genesis 35, 28. Isaac was a hundred and four score years. Isaac gave up the ghost and died and was gathered to his people, being an old man full of days. Okay, Isaac didn't die of sickness, disease, okay, or an accident. Genesis 49, 33. Jacob made an end of commanding his sons. And he, he called his sons, he laid hands on them, he blessed them, and then it said he made an end of commanding his sons. He gathered up his feet into his bed and yielded the ghost. Okay? He died. No sickness, no disease. Okay? And God's will is for all of us because of having death came into the earth through sin. We all will die unless we get raptured or unless God raptures us like he did Elijah, um, Jesus, um, it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, Deuteronomy 32, 48 through 50. And the Lord spoke unto Moses that same day, saying, Get up into the mountain, Abram, Abram unto the mountain, and die in the mountain where you go up and gather unto the people. Then Moses was 120 years old, and he died. His eyes was not dim, nor was his force abated. In other words, he died youthful. He died because he chose to die. God said, go up and die. He didn't say, I'm going to put sickness or disease or accident on you to kill you. He just left his body. And that's how we can do it. Okay. Um, Aaron. Numbers 33, 38 through 39. And Aaron, the priest, went up to the mountain at horror at the command of the Lord and died there. And Aaron was 123 years old. Okay. He just died. He didn't. He knew he was dying. He knew it was time. We know we're supposed to die. Full of age. Don't ever tell anybody that God killed your kid or killed somebody because... Oh, just never mind. I'm just going to have to go on here because I can get into this. Okay. Luke 23, 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having thus said, he gave up the ghost. Jesus chose to die after... He took all the punishment, all the sickness, all the disease. He didn't die of sickness and disease, although all of it was on him for us. He gave up the ghost. He chose to die because what he had to do on the cross was fulfilled. Okay, Elijah left the earth um, this way in 2 Kings 1, 11. Behold, uh, a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. He went up. He got, he got sort of raptured. Okay, Genesis 5.24, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. You can go that way. You can go that way in the rapture, or you can just say goodbye to your friends and say, okay, I'm done, I'm leaving, okay? Okay, wrong believing. God decides when someone was to die. We die when it is our number of days. We die when it's our time. Okay, that's a lie. The truth is God promises us a satisfying long life. If God decided when we were to die, then every accident... Every sickness and every death that brought about that brought about your death was God working to cause you to die. So sickness, disease, death would all be God working to take you home to be with Him. That's a lie. That's a big lie. Okay. For example, we would say this to a grieving mother. God killed your 16-year-old girl in that car crash. You watched her on fire. You couldn't do anything about it. Your friends and her mother smelled the flesh burn off of her bones, heard her screams for help, and couldn't get near the car because it was God's will. It was just his time. It was her time to die. Okay? And then, then after that, and then yet she didn't know Jesus, so she went to hell. Now, what kind of God do you think we serve? God is a good God and a loving God. He never take, He never causes you to die and says it's your time by sickness, death, disease, okay? Her death would be in your memory and the best friend driving the car, that memory would be in there. What, what kind of person would want to serve a God like that? That is so trash and that's the kind of thing you hear at the funerals. People just don't have an explanation why, God, why good people die or Christians die, so they blame it on God. But you know what the word says? The ro word, Romans 2, 4 says, The goodness of God leads people to repentance, not the badness of the devil. Okay, God can take a bad situation and bring good out of it, but God does not allow or make those bad situations happen. He allows it because the devil 
is the ruler of this earth. And God took back that authority, gave it to man, and told man to rule this earth. Now, when us Christians are ignorant and don't know our power and authority, then stuff happens. God allows to happen whatever we allow to happen, okay? It's our fault. We need to change. Okay. Um, scripture, uh, Hosea 4, 6, my people die for a lack of knowledge. Uh, this is the number of the days. Now, we're going to go over some number of the days real quick, um, which is in Job 14, 5. What are the numbers of the days? Scriptures, and I'm going to skip around. So you got to get the book to read the whole thing because I'm going to skip, skip around here. Um, in that scripture, um, Job 14, uh, 5, it says that uh, seeing that his days are determined and the numbers of his months are with thee and has appointed his bounds, he cannot pass all, all the days of my appointed time. Our appointed time is to for long satisfy to be long and satisfied. But in Psalms 90:10 it says that um, we only have 70 years. But you have to read it. Psalms 90:10. He's talking about rebellious people that wandered 40 years around in the desert. Okay, and he said that he that they're going to have 70 people. It was he talked about their wrath, their secret sin, and he talked about um, their uh, sorrow um, and anger and fear. And wrath, okay? Nothing to do with us. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. So we don't have 70 days either. Okay, then if you look at um, Genesis 6, 3, it says, And God said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for he is flesh, yet his day shall be 120. Well, that's good. You can go with that one if you want. But there's more than that. Okay, God doesn't strive with us anymore because of the blood of Jesus. When he looks at you, he doesn't see you and your sins. He sees Jesus. He looks at the lamb, not at the sinner. Okay, and just to remind you, your sins are, for, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. Okay, when he looks at you, he doesn't see your sins. He sees Jesus. Okay, and there's a lot of stuff on that, but um, let's go to the next one. Psalms 91.16 says, With long life will I satisfy him. That's the group we're in today. With long life we're to be satisfied. Okay, and that's Psalms 91.16. That's the group I'm in. Okay, wrong believing. God took them. He knew their future of them walking away from God or the Lord or something worse was going to happen to them. For all things work together for the good. Now that scripture's been twisted too. Okay, truth God is not a child abuser. If we killed our children because we knew something bad was going to happen to them, um, then we would be called a murderer. You know those doctors and those people that kill people who are dying of cancer or some disease, they give them a shot so that they die and they don't suffer? They go to jail. Okay, our God does not do that. Our God is not a child abuser. They're called murderers and they go to jail. Scripture Exodus 23, 36 says, There shall none cast their young, nor be barren in the land, and the number of days I will fulfill. Okay, here are some facts you should know. If, if raising the dead was against God's will, then Jesus went against God's will. God always said it was his, that he did God's perfect will. The Bible also says that Jesus is the image of God. Jesus said, I do what my Father does. He says, I always please my Father. Uh, and he had compassion on them when he raised the dead. And the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And death is an enemy. And death came into the world through sin. Jesus came to give us abundant life, and all the scriptures are here, but you have to get the book and look at it. And in Jude one twenty two, we are told to pull people out of the fire to save them, to show, to have compassion on them, and to raise them from the dead. I believe this means to raise people from hell. When somebody dies and goes to hell, I believe we're to raise them out of hell, and that we have the power and authority to do that. Excuse me, because when somebody dies, they they are on their way in transition to go to heaven or hell, and or some are already there. And we can pull them out. Satan is the ruler of this world and causes all death by whatever means. John 14.30, John 16.11, 1 John 5.9. Satan is a murderer from the beginning. John 10.10 10 and John 8.4. Not God, but Satan is the murderer. Okay? Death is darkness and it's an enemy. We are light. Light always overcomes darkness. Death is part of this world and entered through sin. 1 John 5.4. Grief and sorrow at a person's death are the opposite of sorrow and joy. And the kingdom of God is joy. 